Well, I don't know about you, but I can't see this list for Doo Doo Land. Like, what? <laughs> I can't even see it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for us so that I can see what we're doing here. But basically, um, I have a list of all the cell parts that we're that we've named. This will be awesome because we'll be able to catch ourselves if I forgot something. And then I have um, columns of the different critters. So you'll see that I have um, prokaryotes and I just grouped archaea and bacteria together in the prokaryote column. We've got one column for prokaryotes, but I went ahead and separated out our four kinds of eukaryotes because they have different structures. And I think that this will be a helpful um, way to sort of organize all the stuff that you've learned and where are these things and who has them. I highly recommend the formation or the creation of charts and organizing structures when you're studying massive quantities of information. If you look at this chart, it actually organizes the content into more, it, it chunks the content. And this is a study strategy that is um, tried and true research-based study strategy that involves grouping ideas together and then remembering the whole group instead of remembering each of those individual parts. We'll do this a lot um, and it's, it's something to definitely get comfortable with um, in your own study. Okay, I want you to push pause. I got to figure out how to get a link to this list uh, somewhere, but push pause and fill in as much of it as you possibly can on your own. Try not to, well, go ahead, look back, look up on the internet, like do what you got to do. See if you can fill this out as much as possible without me. And then it will be a retrieval practice type experience where we can check ourselves. Um, we can check your understanding at this point. So you push pause, go do the work. I don't like doing the work for you. I like knowing that you did it yourself first. So really push pause. And even if you're just doing like a screenshot here of um, this list, um, go through it and see if you can fill in. Just put a check if the thing has it. And let's go ahead and let's start with the cell wall. We'll do one example. One example and then you have to push pause. Who has a cell wall? Do prokaryotes have a cell wall? I'm just going to do a check mark for everyone that has it. And I think I might do an X if they do not. Do plants have a cell wall? Yeah. Do protists have a cell wall? Some, some do. Plant-like protists have a cell wall. Do animals have a cell wall? Nope, animal cells do not have a cell wall. And this is the place where you don't know this because we didn't talk about fungi. But I'm going to throw some fungi facts into this mix because I think, again, it's about sort of organizing our understanding. I'm going to tell you, fungi are like mushrooms. And there's other weird things that are fungi. But um, if you think of mushrooms, then you'll have a sense of, oh, okay, I remember that. They have a cell wall. Who's the weird one? We are. We don't have cell walls. Everybody else does. Okay, you push pause and carry on. But now you unpaused because you finished, right? And let's check ourselves. Central vacuole. Now I'm not going to fill them all in. I'm just going to fill in who does have it. Plants are the only guys who have this central vacuole. So if you see one, you know you're looking at a plant cell. Chloroplast. Oh, 
You know what? I don't know if plant-like protists have a central vacuole. My gut feeling would be that they wouldn't because I would think you'd need it for um, multicellular critters, not single-celled critters. But I just put a question mark there so that you can go look it up if you want to. I won't ask you that if I am asking you questions about this. Chloroplasts. Who has chloroplasts? Plants. That's where we do photosynthesis and some plant-like protists. Who has cilia? Did we see, where did we see those? Dude, we saw those. They were in the diagram of the prokaryote. So we know they can have them. We know animals can have them. We saw them in protists. And I'm pretty sure everybody else can have them as well. I'm putting um, parentheses, <laughs> I almost called them quotations again. I'm putting parentheses around plants and fungi because I can't, I'm, my brain can't think of an example right at this moment of a ciliated cell, but I'm, I would guess that they probably do. Cytoplasm, who has cytoplasm home kids? Cha-chunk, cha-chunk, cha-chunk. This is everybody. How many things are there that everybody has? Dude, there's a really important one that's not on here at all, huh? A cell membrane isn't even on here. I'm going to the bottom of my list. Can you see this at the bottom yet? Uh-oh. You can see it. Okay, I'm adding the cell membrane. And I'm telling you, this is one of our other qualities. Everybody has a cell membrane. You can't read that very well, can you? That's as far as I can go. But that's good enough. That should have been on our list. <gasps> Dudes, look what I just found. I found the pla- Oops, you can't see that. I found the plasma membrane. That's the cell membrane. I just didn't put it whatever. So I'm going to fill that in too. Because yes, everybody has it. That's one of the defining characteristics of a cell. All right. Cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton makes up the cilia and the flagella. And yeah, everybody has that too. Do you see how this is kind of going to be a helpful? Hmm, maybe it doesn't look super helpful right now. But what if you learned all the things that everybody has? This is the pile of things that all cell types have. This is the pile that only certain cell types have. It'll make it easier, I think, for you. The endomembrane system. So we're talking about the Golgi, the endoplasmic reticulums, that whole system. Who has that? All eukaryotes and not prokaryotes. So I'm just gonna put an X there. I'm gonna go ahead and put in all your little thingamajingers here so we can see that they all have it. I skipped somebody, didn't I? I skipped the cytosol. That's your, your um, cytoplasm. And everybody has cytoplasm. That's cell guts. And if you don't have cell guts, what's the point of having a cell? What's the point of a membrane if you're not containing something unique inside of it? Flagella, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the cilia, except actually I know definitely prokaryotes have them. I think plants have them, and I think there are some motile plants like plant sperm. We may have to investigate that. Animal sperm. Oh, show got some flagellas in the house. I'm definitely protists have them. I'm going to go ahead and put the parentheses around the fungi because I can't visualize it right now, but I'm pretty sure everybody has flagella. Golgi bodies were part of the endomembrane system. So I think on endomembrane system, all those things, the Golgi bodies... Um, the lysosome 
Interesting. I never thought about whether or not prokaryotes have lysosomes, but a lysosome is cell membrane bound, so I don't think they do. Um, nuclear envelope is membrane bound. I'm, I'm putting all the membrane bound things here in because we know prokaryotes don't have them. Um, the they don't have a nucleus, so they don't have a nucleolus or nucleoplasm. That's like the cytoplasm of the nucleus. I don't think we wrote that down. They don't have a nucleus. Um, they don't have, they do. Oh, they don't have any of our endoplasmic reticulums. And I don't think they have vesicles, but this would be, maybe I should put those in parentheses and someone can confirm or deny someone who has taken micro can share if like what's what's true about that that's a whole bunch of endomembrane system stuff that i just left out and that is check marks in all of our i'm pretty sure all these and i'm putting lines in there just so i don't have to draw um, check marks every single time. Are you with me on this? Everybody else has all of these things. Okay, those are all positive check marks. Maybe I'll put a positive check on the front of it so then you can see that that positive check carries all the way through. So who's left? Intracellular fluid, that's an interesting choice. This is another word for cytoplasm. Didn't we have cytoplasm already? We had cytoplasm and cytosol. Awesome, cytosol and intracellular fluid. I would argue that those are all exactly the same thing. And since I made this list, I can argue that. I win the argument. And we'll say everybody has it. Everybody has cytoplasm. Mitochondria. Who has mitochondria? I just want a new color. Definitely not prokaryotes. Do you see my mitochondria here? Prokaryotes do not. But guess what? Everybody else does. Everybody else has mitochondria. Do plants have mitochondria? Yes. Do fungi have mitochondria? All fun guys have mitochondria. Nucleoid. Well, we know that, oh, 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 nucleoid. What is a nucleoid? I got caught on that one. <laughs> because they didn't define it first. I was like, dude, yes, everybody has a nucleoid who's a eukaryote. No, eukaryotes do not have a nucleoid and only prokaryotes. That's the DNA containing area, right? That is not contained within a membrane. So it's not actually a nucleus. Okay, and then it looks like we only have one thing left. And this would be our friend, the ribosome. And I'm just gonna put a little a little bit of love next to the ribosome because those guys are protein builders. Thank goodness. And everybody has them. Without a ribosome, your DNA would not be worth anything. Your DNA would just be like a book on a shelf, but you can't use it to build anything. You have instructions for how to build a house or how to put in new windows, which Kyle the Amazing is doing right now in our house but you can't do it because the ribosomes kyle is like the ribosomes <laughs> the ribosomes are building the protein kyle is building the windows to go into our house somewhere there were instructions dna that gave kyle the instructions for how to do it i'm going to stop this analogy we will have analogies when we look at dna function in the future i know that took a bit Okay, like going through that whole thing, that giant list, um, that took a while for us to fill that all in. Um, but 
I think it's worth it. It's a good review. And I think it's worth taking the time to like walk through and, and organize and restructure and then throw in your comments. If there's something that I missed or there's something that you want to argue with, um, I'm definitely, I'm curious to see how we did. Okay, one more section and then we're done for the day. 